In this Godot tutorial, I'll teach you everything you need to know about isometric auto tiles to get you further along in your Godot project. Let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be making use of these six tile sets. I've got a couple of them open, stone, grass, forest, floor, dry grass. It's a CC0 public domain asset, so you can download this and use them for your own projects, commercial or otherwise. The download link is in the description below. I'm not the original creator, so give the creator some credit. We're going to start this tutorial off with pretty much a blank slate. All I did is create a new scene of a Node 2D that I renamed to Auto Tile Tutorial. I've also got my six textures right here in the file manager. I dragged them in through the file explorer. I'm going to start by adding a new child node to the scene tree. That will be a tile map. With the tile map, I'm first going to set it up. I'm going to set the mode to isometric and I'm going to set the cell size equal to the cell size of a single tile, which in this case is 128 by 64. With that done, I'm going to go to tile set. I'm going to set new tile set and I'll click it. This will open up the tile set editor on the bottom of the screen and using this double arrow right here, I'm going to make it bigger to give ourselves some workspace. Next up, I'll select all my six uh, tile sets and I'll drag them to this area right here. That will push them in the tile set editor. I'll select the top one because we've got to start somewhere and now we have to set up our auto tiling system. When you start, it could be the case that the snapping has not been activated for you yet. If that's so, just select a region, doesn't matter, you can make it a single tile. Then you can click these snapping options and under the snapping options, you can go to snap options here and make sure that the step is equal to the tile size of your specific tile set. In this case, 128 by 64. Once you've got that set up, you can delete this singular tile and now we can set up the auto tile. To set up the auto tile, I'll select new auto tile here on the top and I'm gonna select all my tiles in the tile sheet. This means that you have to make sure that there's no other tiles in this grouping and that all the floor tiles or ground tiles are nicely grouped together. If that is not the case for your specific tile set, you can use a tile set editor like Texture Packer to repack your tile set textures in a different layout so you can group them nicely together or separate them completely from the specific tile set that you have. With our new auto tile created, we have to set up a couple of options. We can do that on the selected tile right here. First of all, we want to change the name so that in 24 hours from now, we still know what the hell we did today. So I'm going to call this forest floor. Then under the sub tile size, I'm going to double check if the sub tile size is equal to the actual tile size. If that is not the case, you're going to get some very weird behavior. Then lastly, very important, we have to set the auto tile bit mask. There's three options, two by two, three by three minimal and three by three. For isometric, you always have to go by three by three. Otherwise it's never going to work. I choose three by three minimal as I think is the easiest to work with and it gives me the least amount of problems or actually it's the only one that doesn't give me problems. So I suggest you take that one. With that set up, we can go into the bitmask tab on the top and we can start setting up our auto tiles. So this is where it gets fun and where most people lose track when it comes to auto tiling asymmetric tiles. I'm zooming in a little bit, holding control. With this bitmask set in a three by three grid, we can now color these tiles in a three by three grid red. With the left mouse button, we color them. With the right mouse button, we delete this bit mask. These bit masks are sort of like a match puzzle. Godot is like a little baby, is doing a match puzzle, but Godot is not that smart, so it can only use red blocks and no other colors or shapes. So what actually happens is that based on the bit mask, the auto tile system determines which tiles are allowed to be next to each other. When it determines which tiles are allowed to be next to each other, it matches their borders up based on these red blocks. So for example, if I want to match this tile with this tile, we want to put them next to each other. And this tile has this red border over here. It means this tile needs to have at least that red border on the other side so they match up. Now, with the fully drawn tiles, this is pretty easy because you can pretty much say, well, anything is allowed to connect to a full tile, so we can just draw these full tiles fully red. Starts to get interesting when we have these side tiles or even these corner tiles. To get those drawn up, I'm gonna take you into PowerPoint to show you with some images how you can visualize this bitmask working. Because of course, the challenge is that our tiles are drawn diag diagonally or in a diamond, while our bitmasks are drawn horizontally. So how can you match them up? 
So I have a tile right here. And of course, we also have that bit mask, that three by three roster. What you have to imagine when it comes to these tiles is that this bit mask is 45 degrees rotated. You don't see it in the editor, but that's how it works. It is similar with how the coordination system works in isometric tile sets. But yeah, I'm not gonna bore you with that. You just wanna know how it works. So with this 45 degrees rotated, well, that's not exactly 45 degrees, a little bit like this. And is if you want this border to match with any other border, it means you would have to draw these red bricks. In this case, we don't want anything to border on this side of the image or on the tile, because that is where the tile ends. So in this case, we would have to draw this tile as such so that nothing can connect on the top side over here. Of course, this means that we have to draw the actual tile in Godot editor or in the tile set editor as such as we see it turned 45 degrees and we just have to visualize that turn in there. So with this knowledge, let's draw ourselves some bit masks. Back in the editor, we can now start drawing. So we now know that for these, we have to draw the bottom. And for example, with this one, if we imagine that this is going to be turned, we know that we have to draw these. If these red bricks were to turn 45 degrees, we would now have our empty blocks on the side where the image would end. We do the same, for example, on this side. A corner like this means that if we turn it 45 degrees, that this block, which I now painted red, let me zoom in a little bit more, is the block that is going to come right there. So we want that block to stay undrawn and we can draw the other blocks. We could do similar things, for example, with this open corner. We know that once we draw this out, that is going to be turned 45 degrees. So we want to paint these four blocks red. If we turn this, then both this side of the border and that side of the border, which would equal this side and this side of the tile, is going to be unpainted and therefore cannot match. Now, that's a lot of information. I'm going to draw every single bit mask that is necessary for this tile sheet and I'll get back to you and you see how it's supposed to be done. Okay, that's it. These are all the bit masks. If you want to redraw this, pause the video, look at it, maybe make a screenshot so you can make a cheat sheet for yourself and save it somewhere on your desktop. Do whatever you like with it. Next thing up is we can actually copy this bit mask because of course we don't want to redraw them again for the next one, for the next color. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a new auto tile. I'm going to make exactly the same auto tile. I'll again set it to 3.3 and I'll give it a good name so you know I can, I, I know what I did. I don't know, it's going to be a uh, grass dry, I guess. So we set it all properly. We double check the sub tile size. Now we're going to go to the forest map. We're going to select this tile set. We're going to go back to the bit mask. We're going to press this little copy bit mask icon here. We copy it. Now we can go into grass. We can select this one, go into the bit mask tab, and we can now paste it. And like that, bam, all our bit masks are set up for the next and like that we can go through all six of them and have them all drawn out properly. Now one last thing before we start drawing some tiles, you can also give these tiles a different priority. You can do that in the priority tab right here. So for example, we got 20 tiles for a full drawn um, tile. If we say, oh, I, I really like this one for some odd reason, because, you know, I don't know, maybe we're weird. We can say, well, now, right, you got 20 of these. Well, how about we use five to 20, makes it five to 24 for that specific tile. Now, each of these tiles displays one out of 24 chance, and this particular tile is a five out of 24 chance. If you say, oh, but, but this one is even better, I want that to be uh, 10, then you can go 10, you click here. Now this becomes 10 out of 34 or 33, my apologies. And as you can see, now you can set up different priorities. The amount of tiles that you start with is equal to the tiles that match in their bit masks. So in the bit mask, we have 20 tiles, eight on the top row, eight on the bottom row, and four on the third row that are full tiles. So that's a 20 of total. That's why we started out with one out of 20. If I were to look at the priorities, for example, for this one, you can see that it starts out at one out of four. That is because there's four tiles that match that particular bit mask setting. So like that, you know that out of these four, if you want this one to um, uh, appear twice as often as the other ones, you would be able to change this to, what is it, uh, three, select that one. Now that one is gonna be three out of six and the other ones are gonna be one out of six. Okay, with that done, let's draw some tiles. You can see how it works. You can start it out for yourself.
To draw, very easy. We simply click the tile map right here in the node explorer. Now we have our forest floor and our grass dry. And now if I were to draw one, they're just going to be a full tile because it doesn't have anything to connect. It doesn't have enough information. And this tile set actually needs four. So when I draw four of these, you can see it now connects those corners up. And now I can simply draw out this tile. And also what I could do with holding shift, I could draw some straight lines, make a big block, use this bucket fill, fill it up. And like that, now if I were to select the main node, you can see that all the randomization is being applied. You can maybe recognize which one we gave a crazy priority, but you no longer have that repetitiveness and you can super fast draw some tiles. If you want, for example, to add some extra oomph to it, you could set up an extra tile map and just call that tile map two. It's going to put isometric cell 128 for the tile set. I'm actually going to go back to that first tile map, go back to this tile set. I'm going to save it save as we'll save it just right there we're not going to make it any difficult now you might want to change that yourself now we can load it in the second tile map with the new tile stress and we could for example with grass dry of course got to make sure that bucket here is back to single paint you could draw some extra tiles over the uh, forest floor and you can see that now they nicely overlap or merge into each other with the semi-transparency of the borders of the grass dry bar. So you can make some dry grass patches on this forest floor to make it, uh, you know, a little bit more interesting. That was it for this short tutorial. I'll probably do a couple of these short tutorials in between my deep dive long series that I tend to do on my channel. It's good to mix it up a little bit, makes it more interesting for both you and me. So uh, yeah, if you like that, please smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss out on that next tutorial. For the other short tutorials, I have things in mind, like maybe uh, stacked sprite sheets, so you can switch equipment on your 2D characters. I think that'll be a cool one. And maybe uh, magical swords with maybe some 2D particles that emit like uh, some lightning or just cold or something like that. Poison. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Hope to see you then. Until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.